There was an article in yesterday's The Hindu, Oil Prices, El Nino, Key Risks to Inflation, Growth Outlook. UPSC often asks questions on inflationary effects of various factors and factors influencing growth outlook of India and the world. In 2021, UPSC asked this question, which one of the following is likely to be the most inflationary in its effect? And that is creation of money, printing of money by the government to finance a budget deficit. Let's take up this question for practice. What are the key risks to global economic growth in the current geopolitical climate? Increase in trade protectionism and volatility in commodity prices like oil and fluctuation in currency exchange rate and rising wages. They all affect the input price of production. Rising prices of luxury goods as such will not influence so much the global economic growth. But rest of the four factors, they will affect the supply side of the production. Let's take another question to understand the inflationary effects of various factors. Which of the following factor is most likely to have significant impact on inflation in the coming years? Changes in government regulations and policies, fluctuations in the prices of raw material, technological advancements in manufacturing processes, and increase in the global population. Technological advancement will not cause inflation. Increase in global population could be a boom rather than a bane. Now you're left with A and B. Changes in government regulations and policies can of course affect inflation. But it depends on what kind of changes in regulations and policies have been made. Some of the changes can ease up the inflationary effect. Some of the changes can increase the inflation. But fluctuation in the prices of raw material will definitely cause inflation. Just like the previous question we have discussed that factors that changes the cost of production causes inflationary risk. So the best option among the two seems like B. Let's talk about inflation in the context of India. With respect to inflation targeting framework in India, consider the following statements. The inflation targeting framework has been provided statutory recognition under the RBI Act 1934. Statement is correct. It was done via an amendment in 2016. Inflation targeting in India, you would know, is done as per CPI, not WPI. The statement again is correct. And if RBI fails to meet the inflation target for three consecutive quarters, it is required to submit report to the government explaining the reasons for its failure. This is also absolutely correct. You must have read this article in the Indian Express yesterday, the SCO paradox for India. India's membership in the SCO most likely enables which of the following strategic geopolitical opportunities? Your options are countering China's rising influence in Central Asia and balancing tension with Pakistan through a multilateral framework and cooperative projects. Strengthening economic and security ties with Russia as a special and privileged strategic partner or demonstrating its role as a net security provider in neighboring region on the global stage, or gaining greater access to energy resources and trade networks linking East and West. The foreign policy of India is based on one thing, the internal development of the nation. It is not to counter China, it is not to balance tension with Pakistan, Although these things may come as an ancillary benefit of India joining the regional groupings. India also aims to be the net security provider in the Indian Ocean region. But the most appropriate option here, the opportunity that is enabled by India joining SCO is option D. UPSC keeps asking the most likely consequence of major initiative by India. For instance, in 2017, UPSC has asked the most likely consequence of implementing UPI. UPSC also has asked the most likely advantages of implementing GST, that is to replace multiple taxes collected by multiple authorities. In the context of India joining SCO and other regional groupings, let's take another important analytical question. India's support for a rules-based international order is primarily aimed at constraining the power of China and other rivals in Indo-Pacific region, ensuring India's recognition as a leading power and gaining permanent UN Security Council membership, or to protect Indian trade, investment and diaspora interests worldwide, 
or to avoid scrutiny of its own approach to complex domestic political issues like the issue of Kashmir. As we already have discussed slightly that India's foreign policy, India's support to any international order is based on the fundamental thing, India's internal development. So the same will hold true for India's support for rules-based international order. To have India's internal growth and development and that goal seem to be aligned with option C. Although such an approach also increases the prestige of the nation and it will help the nation to be recognized as a leading power and it may also help in gaining permanent UN Security Council membership. It may also help in countering China. But they are ancillary benefits. They are not the direct stated goal and that's not where primarily the foreign policies are aimed at. You must also have read this article in the Indian Express yesterday on National Quantum Mission. What are the advantages of using quantum computers? They can break the existing encryption algorithm. They allow for the simulation of complex systems such as chemical reactions and material science. They enable the development of new algorithms for machine learning and optimizing some of the problems. They are less susceptible to errors due to their use of qubits instead of classical bits. UPSC last year has asked a very basic question on qubit. Qubit is related with quantum computing. And quantum computers, they can perform very advanced function. First, the speed is exponentially high compared to classical computers. They can break the encryption code. Since the speed is very high, so in a very small amount of time, they can break the existing encryption algorithm. But this has been a disruption in the cryptography that we presently practice. And this by no means is considered as an advantage. So option one is not the advantage. Option one rather is a disruption caused by quantum computers. And because of high speed, it does enable simulation of complex system. It will also enable the advancement of click chemistry. Quantum computers, they are also being used in machine learning. We will not get into the detail as to how, but you do understand machine learning will require analyzing huge amount of data. So high speed will always help in analyzing huge amount of data. Statement 4 is slightly debatable. You know the state of qubits, they are highly fragile. But using some of the quantum principles like entanglement, the scope of error in quantum communication is less. So although the statement doesn't say the full thing, but if we read the statement in context of quantum entanglement, then it is correct. And anyway, if you remove statement 1, you'll be left with only one option. You must also have read an article in the Hindu on PM Cares Fund. UPSC asked about important funds dealt by Government of India. In 2020, they have asked a question on MP LADs. The MP LADs funds are sanctioned on yearly basis and the unused funds can be carried forward to the next year. The answer here is option D. Now the question for you is this, which of the following comes under the ambit of Audit powers of Comptroller and Auditor General of India. All expenditure from the Consolidated Fund of India, yes. Contingency Fund of India, yes. Public Account of India, yes. But Prime Minister's Cares Fund and Prime Minister's National Relief Fund, they does not come under the audit powers of CAG. They are audited by private agencies. Supreme Court of India also has ruled that Prime Minister's Care Fund is established as a charitable trust. And the money is not used from Consolidated Fund of India or the Contingency Fund of India or the Public Account. So it can be audited by private agencies. So the answer would be option A. You must also have read the news. The Department of Biotechnology recently has said that the exercise to sequence 10,000 Indian human genomes and create a database under the center back Genome India project is about two-thirds complete. So try and solve this question, which among the following are the applications of genome sequencing? Development of personalized vaccine. Of course, yes, especially for the vaccines of cancer. The tumor of cancer carries different genetic material. And to identify that in different person, you will require a personalized vaccine. And the identification can be done by genome sequencing. So genome sequencing will aid the development of personalized vaccine. Genome sequencing will tell you all about the sequences of gene and any changes or mutation can be easily identified. And all these will help in criminal investigation and forensic analysis. 
once you know the sequence of gene around the world among different people that will help in studying the evolution process as to how the human beings migrated from one continent to rest of the world the same idea can also be used in conservation of endangered species by identifying genetic diversity genetic diversity is an important marker for resilience and stability of any species but you can't understand the complex human behavior from genome sequencing human behavior comes not only from inside but also from external factors so the answer obviously would be option c upsc in 2017 has asked this question what is the application of somatic cell nuclear transfer technology nuclear transfer would mean that something is getting transferred from the nucleus and that in all probability is the dna material so that should help in reproductive cloning of animals Thank you very much for attending this session and be a beat as prelims is approaching you must feel confident in the last month just practice questions revise the compilation of questions from dpp revise the test series that you have already given if you go through many many questions you'll feel very confident before the exam